In this demonstration, we're going to look at the idea of a release, what it looks like, how you can do some edits to it, and we'll execute a release to see what that looks like. To do that, we'll go to the releases page here, and you can see that I've got several releases that I am building that are all in progress. None of them are executing yet, and what I want to focus on just now is this one called the ELK system initial release. We're going to come and revisit some of these others in the future. For this one, you'll notice that what we've done is we've added the ELK system that we had linked over there on the administration page where we looked at applications and environments. And we've added that one here. And we've even been able to say for this release of the ELK system, we have three different user stories that are being implemented because of this release. And you'll notice here that one phase of this release is related to deploying into the QA environment. And then a second phase for the production environment. Now, we don't have a really a limit on how many phases we can add. You notice over here on the right, I can create as many phases as I need. And I can even drag and drop them to reorder them in whatever sequence it might need to, to be. Once I've developed these phases, I can describe how I want those phases to start, what's called an approval gate. These approval gates, if I edit this for a moment, can be either by manual means, that is to say an operator, Somebody will log in and tell it to begin that phase. Or it can be set to automatic. Now, the first one wouldn't be automatic. The first one would either be manual or it would be scheduled based on a calendar date and time. But if it were the second or third or fourth phase, it could be set to automatic so that when the previous phase finishes, this one automatically fires off. All right, so because I've set this to manual, I haven't bothered to set any specific dates for it. It'll be whenever the team is ready. Now, when we create the phases, inside the phases, we build a workflow of tasks that are the different activities that need to be done for that deployment. In this particular situation, I've created a task here that says, deploy the ELK system to GA. And let's just edit that for a moment to have a look at the details. You'll notice here that in this particular situation, I, I have set who is the owners of this task, which is the super user, which is me logged in, and the QA team because they're responsible for the deployments into the QA environment. Then I've got the task type. Is it to run a deployment? And if it is to run a deployment, into which endpoint is it going to point? And then the information, because it's a run deployment task, all the other bits down here have to tell it, well, which system in release automation, which specific deployment plan am I using, and which environment is it going into? Now, that's not the only task type. There are uh, other task types. For example, I could set up a manual task type where someone simply comes in and reports that the task is done and that the release can carry on. Let's create one of those here in the second phase. Notice this is the same kind of deployment task as in the first phase, except it's just de it's deploying the application into the production environment. So what I want to do is I want to create another task here that represents a validation. I want someone to do the diligence that they need to do to confirm that the application is in production, working properly, and so far as we can tell, everything is as it should be. So I'm going to create, I'm going to tell it here that I'm going to validate the final deployment here. And you'll notice over here on the right, I'm going to link that to the content that we said was pertinent to this particular deployment. So these user stories over here that are mentioned here on the left, by linking them here, we have a kind of a historical record 
of what this deployment was actually doing from a content perspective. So I've got that. I'm also going to say, by the way, that this is my release team is the one that's responsible to valid to do that validation. Somebody from that release team has to actually come here and say, yep, it's done. Everything is good. Because this is not an automated task, this is a manual task, I'll leave this one set here to manual. All right, so I'll tell it to create that. And it automatically adds a new task here at the end of the ones that are already created, which is exactly what I want in this situation. But like I said before, like with the phases, I can drag and drop and move them around with these I can do the same sort of thing. So I need, if I drop one on top of the other, that actually creates parallel tasks. But in this particular case, the sequential order is what I need. All right, so this one is defined. Everything is good and as I want it to be. So let's go back to our release page for a moment. And you'll notice that I, I still have exactly the same thing as we just saw. Everything's in development state, but I'm actually now ready to execute this deployment. So I'm going to go to the first phase and use the little arrow here to tell it to run that phase and that will begin the execution here of this one. Now it happens that this is an automated task, right? This was going into release automation and actually running that deployment plan there for that application. And this will track the progress of that. And you can see that it, the progress bar went to completion. It's now marked this with a green check here. And that one has succeeded. So very well done. That's good. Because the second phase was set up to go automatically after this first phase was done, the second deployment into a different environment now has been executed. And that's done. You'll notice that because that task is done, the last one has gone pending. So this simulates the idea that I'm now waiting on somebody from the release team to come in and tell me what is the state of this. And I can cl click on, you can see that it's highlighted here, the one that's ready for me to tell it where we stand here. And I can come either here and either tell it that this, we have failed in our deployment. It's not gone as we expected it to. Or I can tell it, yep, it's done. Everything is good. We'll call this one all set. And I'll go ahead and do that. Now, before I do that, by the way, I want you to notice one thing. So we're, we're in progress on this particular release, but not completed yet. Let me go back to the release page for a moment. And we can see that the icon beside the Elk System Initial Release has changed to this blue running icon. So that tells me, yep, that one's in progress and uh, is a matter of paying attention to it and the people that need to do something about it. So we're going to simulate the idea that, yes, we're from the release team. We're going to say, yeah, this is actually all done, confirmed, ready to go. So I'm going to call it done then. And now all the tasks are completed. Now, there's a couple of things to know about this. One is, let's say the first phase had completed successfully, but the second phase had not. Then I would need to go and fix whatever had caused the problem, and I would need to rerun it. This is the beauty of this solution, is that you can rerun a phase, rerun a task, no worries for that, and it simply executes a new instance of that deployment plan over in release automation. Now you take that idea and you may not be deploying a single application. You may be deploying two or 10 or 50 different applications all in the same release or in the, even in the same phase. No worries for that either because it, what it's going to do is it's going to, you can pick up where you left off or you can uh, rerun the entire bit. In our case, we have executed all the tasks and simulated the idea of a confirmed validated ending here. Now, even though all the tasks are done, you'll notice that at the top up here, it says that our status is still that it's running because we have not closed it. 
we've not marked it as done. And that's the last thing I'm going to do here is that exactly. So I'm going to now once once I do that, by the way, once I take it out of the status of running and tell it that it's done, then, then it will be locked. That release will be completely uh, completed there. So I'll do that. Market is done. And you can see now that the status says it's done. And uh, there's no more opportunity now to rerun all or part of this release. If I go back to my releases page. I can see there, yep, now that status is reflected as this green tick mark here and that the, that release is done.